Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra, and welcome to Suze, where I teach you how to analyze and visualize data in Python. Today we're talking about differences between Matplotlib and Seaborn. These are the two quote unquote main libraries that you're going to be choosing from when working out how to graph and visualize data. And this video basically just goes over the basic differences between the two and potentially will allow you to work out uh, which one is best suited for you in your situation. Of course if you find the video helpful at any point then consider liking to let me know and subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos in the series. But yeah with that out of the way let's get into it. And we're back with our AD, and as you can see, I'm recording at an actual reasonable time this time. Uh, yeah, these imports should look somewhat familiar, apart from this one. This is the first episode we're actually going to be using Matplotlib. Um, and to be fair, we haven't actually used Seaborn either, so these two are both new, so make sure to include those. Uh, and as you can see, we're using a different data set, so we're using this live by subscribe 2021.csv if you are following along with the data sets, of course. Uh, if you are, then the dataset list has been updated. So as you can see, we have all of them up to episode 16 now. This is all the ones we're going to need. It's only eight of them. Um, but this is the only time we're going to be using this specific one. So if you run that, you'll see that I still have an update in my Python version. And you'll see that we have this particular um, graph here. We have these days. And then on each day, we have unsubscribed and a subscribed. And that's going to come in uh, useful. It just makes it a little bit easier to show what I want to show. And what I want to show is the differences between Matplotlib and Seaborn. So Matplotlib is Python's graphing library in a sense. So it's, at the very least, it's its main graphing library. I'm sure there are others out there. But Matplotlib is the one that really most people use. And it is very powerful. You can do a lot with it. But it is also very, very complicated and very, very tricky to use. There's a lot of weird stuff with it that doesn't make a huge amount of sense. And this is where Seaborn comes in. Seaborn aims to be a wrapper that sits on top of Matplotlib. So you're still using Matplotlib, but it just makes everything a lot easier and a lot quicker. Now, if you want complete control, I would probably recommend sticking with Matplotlib. Even though I think you can change Matplotlib settings with Seaborn, but I don't know. But if you're like me and you just want to uh, get graphs out quickly, you know, you want to see the data there and then, uh, then Seaborn is the one to use. And I'm going to be showing you how to make a box plot specifically. We will get into box plots in more detail later uh, in episode, what episode is that? That's number 12. It's a few episodes from now. But for now, I just want to show you the differences between how to make a box plot in Matplotlib and Seaborn, and also differences in visuals, because Seaborn does a lot of stuff with the look as well. So we're going to start in Matplotlib. We're going to come down here and create a cell. And we're going to create our figure. So fig equals plt.figure. Uh, now, regardless of whether or not you use uh, Matplotlib or Seaborn, I'm going to be doing this. You don't have to do it with Seaborn, I don't think. I just like to put everything in a figure so it's easier to show. Uh, so we can actually do figure.show down here. And then, and then everything we do in between that will be adding to the figure and then we can show it at the end and it will show it in the actual thing because we have Matplotlib in line up the top. So to create a box plot, I'm um, just going to separate out a little bit what we do is a plt dot box plot and then we open brackets and i'm going to bring down uh onto a new line and create a list here so inside this list is all of the different uh boxes we want to draw so in this case we want to draw two and it is a uh, df views uh and then open square brackets again a uh, df subscribed status uh double equals oops the double equals is there uh subscribed and then the same thing again i don't have a left control key at the moment so i'm probably going to be a bit slower than normal <laughs> uh and then that's a close bracket there do that and then unsubscribe so what we want to do is we basically want to show a box plot for subscribed figures and a box plot for unsubscribed figures and this is just going to show the views for each uh, in the live streams that I did in January. I can't remember if February is included in that. It may well have been, I don't know. Actually, March may have been as well. I actually don't remember <laughs> what's included. We can have a look actually, just real quick. Just see, yeah, it's March as well. So you can see if I open it like this, we have a certain number of views for unsubscribed and unsubscribed people. I basically wanna show uh, the difference between the two uh, as a box plot. We wanna see how different they are. This is a good way to do that. So anyway, back to our box plot. We have the two graphs in there now. And that's all we need out of that. Uh, so now we need to set the X label. So it'd be plt.xlabel subscribe status, if I could spell. 
which I never can, so I don't know why I keep mentioning it. <laughs> then we want to set our wire label, so the one on the Y axis is going to be the number of views. And we want to set the ticks. So this is, I believe, the ticks. Yeah, this is uh, the ticks going on the X axis. So we want to set a kind of what it will read for each thing. Uh, it'll make more sense when you actually see it. So we want to set that to a set of df uh, subscribe status. So we want the you know subscribed and unsubscribed. We can have it as a list in there if you want, but I'm just using a set because it makes it just a little bit more dynamic. Uh, and then we actually need to apply that. So plt dot x ticks uh, ticks equals uh, range one uh, len ticks plus one. So these are the ticks that we actually want to override. And then we want to set the labels of those ticks to ticks. Uh, and that's it actually. So now if we do control enter and show it, we can see that this is our um, this is our graph here, right? Is this actually backwards? Because I genuinely don't know if this is backwards or not. Because uh, you don't really get a choice. Subscribed is the highest one. It is backwards. Okay, so in this case, we would need to do this week. Because last time I did this, it wasn't backwards. I guess because we're using a set. Um, so we actually want this to be subscribed and then uh, unsub. Arrived. There we go. You can set it as a tuple as well. I'm pretty sure anyway. Uh, yeah, you can. Okay, so that's the way around now. So if... Oh, I suppose order does matter. So you probably will actually want to use a tuple. But as you can see, we have our graph here. If I make it a little bit bigger. We have a graph here of, you know, my subscribed uh, views on live streams and unsubscribed views on live streams. So generally speaking, in live streams through January through March, uh, I got way more views from subscribers than I did from people that weren't subscribed, which I suppose makes um, it makes sense for streams. For videos, it makes sense to be the other way around, but for streams, it makes sense to be this way around. Um, so as you can see, there's quite a lot going on here. So we create the figure, we uh, we actually tell Matplotlib what uh, boxes we want to draw, uh, then we manually set the X label, then we manually set the Y label, then we have to create a list of ticks. This should really be tick labels, I suppose. Uh, to, to, you know, just make it a little bit clearer. Uh, and then you actually have to apply these ticks, so you have to ticks and then you have to set... Uh, if you set it at zero, it's this line here. It will actually set it on the on the y-axis itself. So you need the one and then obviously you need the length of ticks plus one. And you have to set labels to that. Uh, and then you have to show the figure. So there's a lot that you have to do, but, uh, but you can see how you have... A, a lot of manual fine control over this, but a lot of the time you just want to get a graph out quickly and you don't really mind too much about all the fine details. You kind of want something that can set these axes for you um, and all that. So this is where, as I said before, Seaborn comes in. So if you do it in Seaborn, it's a fig equals plt dot figure sns dot box, not box and plot, that's the wrong one. Box plot. I'll get to box and plots later, but right now we're just we're just doing a standard box plot. So dead equals df, so we pass our data frame in. X equals uh, subscribed status, and y equals views. And then a fig dot show, and voila, we have our <laughs> uh, we have our graph. Now you can see that everything is backwards. Um, I don't necessarily know why it does it. I suppose if the order matters, I imagine there's probably a way to change it. But in this particular example, the order doesn't matter at all. But as you can see, there are a number of differences to talk about. So the first is the width of the graph. Um, the widths are set differently. And the second is the color. So the colors are set differently as well. Uh, or the colors are actually set to something in Seaborn. It gives you a an, a, an actual nicer looking graph than the one that Matt Potlib gives you out of the bat. It also gives you the X ticks automatically and it also gives you the labels automatically as well. So you can see all this stuff is exactly the same as it is in the um, in, in the Matt Potlib one as well. The only difference is the way that this actually performs these operations. So essentially uh, we're passing in the data frame so we're saying that this is the data we want to use. The x-axis is the subscribe status. So because there are two um, 
different values that are possible in this column. It gives us two pots, pots of those unsubscribes and subscribed. Look, as you can see, that's these are the only two values you can get. If there are more values, then you'd actually have them all. Um, and, pretend, and if you're doing uh, device type, for example, there are a lot more device types. And you could just pass in x equals device type here and it will automatically create a new one for you. With this, I mean, we only had to do two. But if there were more than two, then you would have to do every, <laughs> you have to do all of them manually, unless there is a better way of doing it, which I, I don't know. There probably is some sort of way to get this to split like that um, dynamically. If someone does know, then let me know. But I don't know it. <laughs> um, and then, of course, you have the Y equals views, which is the same. So as you can see, these are the differences. We're going to be using Seaborn throughout the rest of the series because it is just a lot quicker and a lot easier uh, to use than just straight up Matplotlib. Of course, straight up Matplotlib does have its uses um, as well, but not really in this series. We just want you know the graphs to look nice. And we want the graphs to just make themselves. It's all automatic with Seaborn. It's all done for you. And that's what I like about it so much. Uh, but yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about with comparing these two uh, different libraries. If you have any questions, then feel free to leave them in the comments below, or you can join the Discord user link in the description. But yeah, with that, I'd like to thank my patrons for being as amazing as they are. And I'll see you next time where we actually start doing some actual graphs and I explain kind of what they do. So we're going to be doing line graphs, scatter graphs, rug graphs, and ECDF graphs in the next video. So I'll see you for that.